one slice, we come on the show, we talk about the sermon in real life perspective and let you know what we think about whatever it is that Pastor Balaji has been teaching. My name is Shio Bankale and I'm welcoming you specially to another episode of Slides. It's about to be an interesting episode and I've got a fantastic guest today. On my left, I have... Frank. And still on my left, I have... Precious. Yes. In the spirit of Valentine's, we are going to be discussing something very interesting today. Happy Love Month to you, wherever you're watching us from. Um, so my very first question goes to Frank. Okay. Do you believe in the concept of see finish in relationships yeah uh, yeah absolutely does it exist and how would you describe see finish um i mean that's familiarity uh there's this saying uh, too much familiarity brings contempt or something yeah. like that yeah so it is something that is prevalent in relationships not just romantic relationships you know any kind of relationship wherein um you know, you have gotten used to the presence of, um, of another party, right? There comes a time when it's a given that you tend to take them for granted. granted. It might not be, and most times it's not intentional, right? It's not intentional. It's just that, you know, as the relationship progresses and the interaction intensifies, there are certain um borders that existed before that would no longer exist because you know now there's familiarity mm -hmm. so yeah that happens in relationship there are times okay. where we're in someone in relationship like i've seen instances when guys would just say ah, let me know them that we were you know it didn't used to be like that before okay so let's bring it home let's bring it home have okay. you ever been in this situation where your partner started to see you finish or you started to see your partner finish mention a factor that caused it and how you handled it Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to pressures. Have you ever been in a relationship where C finish became a thing? Well, yes. Okay, tell us how that happened. How you got to that place. Tell us how long how long you guys were together before you started to get too familiar and how you handled it or did it lead to the end of the relationship? Well, it led to the end of the relationship. Okay, so um, now let's go back to the back. Yes. It we we actually we've been together for for three years or thereabouts, I know the mistake I made was um, staying close to him. So that sickness was very, 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 very too much. Yes, just too much because some things that normally I can defend see me outside, I'm not even try to me. He had, he had, he did, he did. I know everything in the relationship was what even made the relationship crash was because of that sickness. You know? mm. It was so bad that. It's very very bad. Very, and do, very do, do bad. you mind sharing one? Maybe um, not to private one, but do you mind sharing one thing he did that he wouldn't have done on a normal day, and he did because you were staying close to him. Okay, one thing he did that, but let me tell you the one that led to the crash of the relationship was um, the fact that he normally I keep my my ATM myself. I don't like disclosing my ATM. Not that I have millions in it, but again, in my um, something I keep to myself. But then he went ahead, he took my ATM card without my knowledge. Will I say he withdrew more than I was supposed to withdraw? And I asked him, was he lied to him? And after making so, so many investigations, I found out that he was the one that took the stuff. And it was wow. very annoying. If that took the stuff and he told me, you get the different thing, but he took it and. He stole from you. Yeah, he stole from me. Yes, he stole from me a <laughs> wow. huge amount. And wow. He actually paid later on. Okay. Gradually, but then the the fact that he lied and he did it without my knowledge, knowledge yes. was so annoying. Yes, he was annoying. So that was what. And that I'm sorry you had that. to go through that because I feel like if a man respects you, he will not steal from you. Sure. Right. Okay. So yeah, I see you smiling. <laughs> um. <laughs> Do you believe, so based on what she just said, right? I'm not going to go too deep into the whole robbery thing because it's actual robbery, unarmed robbery. But um, 
do you think a man and a woman living together i mean apparently it is not a biblical concept it's absolutely wrong morally spiritually you are not supposed to live together before but let's come down to the fact that the average couple in lagos stay together before they get married because As of a rent. Man, because of rent because of rent mm, okay plenty. how <laughs> how is it because of rent rent is plenty the rent is plenty so I've seen ex- I've seen instances where your parents don't stay in Lagos, okay, and then you're working in Lagos, and because of rent, I mean, in defense of what you just said, because of rent, they started cohabiting with the man. Do you think it should even happen as a man now? Have you ever cohabited before? No. 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 The no is looking like violent no, like no. God forbid. That's cohabited with somebody I'm dating. Yes. Nah. Okay, nah. and you totally don't buy the idea, and you don't advise men to do it. So the thing is, there was a point in time where I was of the opinion. Then I wasn't even like, um, I hadn't gotten to a point where I would say, or I, I, I was thinking, or I don't even think I was in a relationship at that point in time. But I was thinking that, oh, before I get married, I'd like to live with your partner, my partner, you know, for so I can understand you know the character or see if it's something that i'll be able to keep up with you know but then um over time i realized i was a was an immature way of looking at things because um i assumed or i had assumed at that point in time that uh, that was the like whatever i saw as the behavioral traits at that point in time was the end of the evolution whereas with each passing day we grow yes, so it doesn't matter yes. how much you think you know about somebody by the time that you get married new experiences will come in that will bring in new parts of themselves yeah, right yeah. also before we i leave this argument let me quickly chip in that see finish is not always bad mm. right I, I i think many times is the connotation is usually it has a, a like ne- negative connotation but it's not always bad because the very essence of being with somebody is so that That's they can see you finish right okay, so okay, if from that angle. yeah so um and you know the, the um it's you are supposed to if you are being honest in a relationship you are supposed to project vulnerability right so if you are vulnerable then there is a high propensity that they are going to see you finish i think okay. where the negative connotation comes in is when it now borders on disrespect Absolutely. i think that's where the problem Absolutely. is but when it comes to you know Siphonis, it's not, it's not always bad. You know? Jolly, it's actually cute. Okay, Patrick. It's cute. Omid Jolly, cute. Siphonis comes with disrespect. No, so he is, and I think I totally agree with him. He's saying that you, because you're in a relationship and you're committed to this person, you're supposed to be vulnerable 100%. Mm-hmm. And vulnerability comes with seeing finish. Mm, sure. So seeing finish in itself is not a bad concept. However, certain men who don't know how to respect women, or even certain women who don't know how to respect their men, when they see them finish as a relationship to be, they now start to disrespect them yeah. and everything. Do you get it? Do you agree that it's, yeah. it's, it's based right. on personality and the way they handle the information they now know about this person? Because when I was a stranger to you, you didn't know certain things about, about me. Sure. And now you get to know. All right, away from that, let's talk about relationships, right? Frank, how long have you been with your partner? Uh, what? I don't know that word. This is 2023. <laughs> so. For the glory of God, it will be six years. Wow, wow. Yeah. that's something. That's yeah, something. And, that, and, and that was my first relationship. Oh, I like that. No, it's not oh, a. That's, that's very cute. You Can we gather together to say, oh. oh? You don't know the backstory. So, honestly, that's like, you know, it, it's not. Frank has never been in a relationship before. And then the one he would get into is being in relationship for six In this generation. Please, like, can we stand up and get this? Thank you very much. I know. It's difficult. I know. Thank you. I'm grateful. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. So, can you tell us the point where you realize that, ah, this one, I fall in love. Oh, to love. Mm. Tell us. It's when, when myself. As a titled man, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is going. Mm. I went to beg. Yeah. Um, um, I actually did. I I I I went to beg. Okay, should I say beg? I think uh, that terminology is. Yeah, I went to beg. She broke up, and I went to beg. That's when I knew. That's. That, and it was still very early in the relationship. That's when I knew. Hey. <laughs> she, she so, broke up, so, like, so I don't get. I, I want to get it. She, 
you liked her, mm. let's say you liked her, 2023 minus 6 is 2017. So sometime in 2016, you liked her. So 2017, somehow she agreed to date you. Now, a few months into the relationship, you guys broke up. Mm. And then you realize, ah, I can't do with this one. You now went to beg. That's when you now realize that you are in love with her. You know, it's shocking because... <laughs> <laughs> I've not heard this one point in my entire life. No, it's shocking. It's shock, no, it's shocking because, like, I, I'm typically no nonsense person. I see it in your face. And I'm very, 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 very confrontational. Okay. I don't care who he is. I don't care whose ox is God. If I have something to say, I will say it. Right? But um, okay. So me saying beg now. Let me break it down. And, Please and, do. By yeah, all means. Yeah. So let me break it down and. It was basically to seek understanding as to why, you know, why she was there. Because a, a part of me told me that this was happening as a result of immaturity. On your part? On her part. Okay. okay. Right? So, and I knew that I liked her. Mm. Right? So, I wanted to be absolutely certain that her, her reason okay. for breaking up was cogent. Right? right? It was solid and not just some um exuberance right so that's why i i it, it's crazy because that same day i had a national um rap competition right national rap competition that is the biggest rap competition in nigeria i had the finals that day and i was living in ibadan then she was in lagos i came all the way before mm-hmm. i went for my it competition came down more. before i went before <laughs> i went did. before i went for my competition i branched at her Aww. office and then went to like trash it and i'm like Yo, so what are you saying? That's Aww. nonsense you were telling me about the phone. Tell me in person, right? And then, you know, we trash it out. And then it was, that's when I realized, oh, hey, me. Ah, I really <laughs> love this girl. Absolutely. Okay. And are we looking to settle down anytime soon? Yeah, yeah you can keep. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he did that. All right, let me come to you, Precious. Um, Tell me the idea of, describe your ideal man. My ideal man? Okay, God fearing. Of course, we are believers. Yes, yes. number one, God fearing. Yeah, a patient guy. You must be patient, like patient. We go get her. Let's do it. I'm fine. So it's safe to say that you know how Pastor B always tells us that um, as you are looking set, looking forward to certain standards and this testing, you must also be able to exhibit as those standards. So you are saying you are God fearing, you are patient, Definitely. and you are a go getter. Sure. So anybody that so you are not just, you are not big on TDH, tall, no, dark, no, no. handsome. No, 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 no. Once no, it's no. all of these things and fine. shorts, you can. Shots like shots. <laughs> I don't get no because I will ask some girls who are what high. describe your ideal man. They will say he must be from so 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 tribe, he must be Nigerian. No, I want a white man, he must be that and that. You only said God fearing patient and go get her, Thank and you will get it in the name of Jesus, amen. So let's talk about frustration in relationships. There are certain people that have talked about how they've been with their partners for a long while say two three four five six years sometimes and this woman wants to get married she wants to settle down she wants to become a wife already not because me for example my yearning for marriage is not because it's the next thing to do or is the next thing after career stability or financial stability or the next thing to do after a degree i want to get married because i'm in love right and i've been with this man for a while and he's not saying anything as regards marriage and then I take the bold step of having a conversation with him and it's still not forthcoming. How do women handle that frustration that comes with it? How should a woman handle it? That, that's for pressures. And then for Frank, how do you think, I think you should send a message to men out there, telling them how they think they should communicate better to their partners on why they've not taken a bold step yet to um, say they should settle down and get married. And how women can handle it. I mean, from a man's perspective, you're speaking for men now. Yeah. How do you think women should talk to you people that to sink and then you cannot take the step or you can make an excuse on what or why? But I wanted to first start with the reason why they always delay. Yeah. Let's let's start with pressure. Okay. Okay. Why do um, how do women how handle, women handle frustration, frustration of not settling down when they are already set? Yeah. How do they handle it? Most women, 
I'll go straight to the point. Like, uh. guy, what's up? What are you waiting for? And most women, most women just keep back and um, wait for the guy. What I'll do, what I'll do is I'll go straight to the point. I'll ask you. First of all, before I even first have a relationship, mm. my first question will be, where is he living to? Okay. Where's, I mean, of where's course. The, where's the relationship living to? So after mm. like the, let just say, six months, eight months, and no sign, no movement, nothing has done, I will still ask you again. Is six months not too early for someone you're just getting to know? No, not I'm, not saying, I'm not saying six months you should have, I should have but to get married to him though. Okay. Six months just like a reminder or like oh like an clarity, <laughs> like what's up? Yeah. Hope this is what you want. Okay. This. Okay. 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 Hear yeah, from him. After that, and I know from his from his response, I will know if you are yeah, still on the same track yes, or if know, you should start packing your bags. Definitely, I will know what next to do and um, what to do next. Okay. So I'll keep myself um, in a relationship that is not going to be fruitful. Or making myself um, frustrated. frustrated. Okay. I think what Precious said is very vital because some women don't know how to ask, right? They don't, they don't know, know. They don't know when to ask. They don't know how to ask. And something that is very pivotal that you should do at the beginning of your relationship is to ask questions. This toasting that you are toasting me, where are we going to? At what point are you going to be ready to get married to me, right? And I think women, some women. I think one thing people should take away from this, if you don't take anything away from this from this episode, take away that when you're in a relationship and you already have, and when you're about to get into a relationship, I beg your pardon, ask, say, ask important questions such as, when will you be ready to get married? If you say 10 years time and it doesn't work for me, don't bother entering the relationship. No, if the man says, I'll be ready in two years and it works for you, fine. And then some months to two years, one, this man say, that you are how far? It's almost two years. What's going on? Is this still two years or you want to extend it? That kind of thing. I think people should ask important questions at the beginning of the relationship. Okay, over to you, Frank. How should women ask? Why do men delay? And what do you think a woman would say that will make you decide to delay? Um, okay, so uh, it's a plethora of reasons why a guy wants to propose, right? Um, he might not like you. Wow! And no. you guys are in your relationship. Wow! 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 I'm telling you, you see, you're, you're <laughs> I did not expect that to be the like, case. I thought from oh say financial reasons. No, or indecision. He, Interesting. He might not. <laughs> he might not <laughs> Interesting. That is to say, some oh women are actually wasting oh. time. Yeah, in some relationships, you are dating yourself. I think the the huh. I think and you the, see the red flags. But huh. you stay, Sha. I think dating the yourself. I. I Show you people who hear the truth. Uh, uh, why not? Please, bring it on. <laughs> They're taking notes. Alright, so, it's either he just, is just not that into you, you know, or he doesn't see himself actually getting married to you. There is that. Mm, okay, yeah, right? okay. There's also the aspect of, I mean no disrespect when I say this, okay. right? but when it comes to the issue of marriage, right, um, women mostly look at it from a um, women generally, they, they have a generalist perspective concerning marriage. Let's marry. Mm. Let's, let's, let's get married. Um, they are picturing in their minds what they are going to look like on that day. Wearing their, their gown guys. and all of that. They are picturing that how beautiful the proposal is going to be. <laughs> the guy mm. is breaking it down <laughs> to the micro level understanding that this demands a a a higher level of productivity across mm, board because he's responsible life. for he's now responsible for mm. you this is not i'm just dating now i am responsible for you mm. there is that there's also the aspect of he's not just getting married to you he's getting married to, to your, your family has, yeah right everybody so when you look at all of that Sometimes when they break it down and they look at where they are right now, mentally, not ready. physically, and you know, materially, they realize that nah, I can't undertake this now. Mm. That's why you see when guys are uh, when people tell guys, oh yeah, what are you waiting for? And all of that, they know that if you tell me to go get married now, based on what I have now, by the time there are issues as regards 
my inability to provide. Okay. You will not be there. Mm. I'm mm. the one who is going to bear the brunt of all of this. So when guys break all of this down, they are like, ah, I'm on, nah. So why not dates? Yet. Nah, what? Why dates? They date. In the, you are not in financially the... capable of mm. ending and um, starting a marriage yet, mm. and you know this lady will be ready in a few months or years time. Why dates? Why to stop the date? Why, why just not why be stay single down? until you can financially uh, provide for her? Then you toast her and you do the thing. Why date? Why keeping her? Yes. Why why, why? why enter the relationship at all? Yes. Why enter the relationship mm -hmm. at all? Yes. It, you will not be financially ready until ten years time. Date her then. If she's married, find someone else. What, you want to hook somebody's daughter what is, down? What is shocking? Or like what is surprising is that you think there is a defined time frame as to when things are going to be okay I mean, economically for a you guy. Can't tell. Exactly, you it's can't not tell. fixed. So if a guy asks a girl out now and she says she wants to get married married in two years, the guy hopes okay. that in two years he will be ready. Mm -hmm. But what happens if you know the economic climate does not favor the decision? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So there are things so there are some and this is not to defend guys who waste the the, the ladies, the, the ladies time. time this mm -hmm. is not to defend at all okay. right mm -hmm. in fact i think where there is a red flag is if there is an avoidance of, of a having conversation. a conversation yeah. that's yeah, where there is yeah, a red flag yeah. but if a guy constantly carries you along you guys have the conversation and he's like yo this is why we are not married yet right if we were to like be based on the air, every other thing, I'm ready. Okay. But you see, it's just this one. Okay. But there are actionable steps that I'm taking towards it. Only, okay. only. Yeah. Look at it. Uh -huh. Then you can understand. You have something to work with, as opposed to yeah. when you say, uh, "Let's talk so about an marriage," and then they're like, "I don't want to talk about it." it. Uh -huh. I think that's where there, there is a problem. So what's the third? What, what would you say is the third reason why it's setting? You said the first one was doesn't like it's not into you. The second one maybe financially is not ready. Do you have a third excuse? Why men really? Uh, no, I think I think I, yeah, I think that mostly covers it because like I, I, I so they are they are blanket points. Mm -hmm. You can pick from it. from from it. Like in the area of um, he's not just that into you. You could also that's why you can pick like indecision. He's not sure if you are the one. If you if you are dating one, you know you want to spend the rest of your life with this person. You know it's mm -hmm. not something you are. If you know, you know. Exactly, you know. So that indecision can also be grouped under, you know, him not really liking it. Now let's move on to consecration in relationship. <laughs> Certain people think that when you are consecrated in a relationship, it only means that you are not, um, um, you are not engaging in intimacy with your partner, or you are not engaging in certain activities with your partner. Right? Do you agree that that is all that consecration? has to do with it. yes sex is not love so, um, love is not sex yes mm. just started with some bombshells sex is not love love is not sex okay yes. okay love is um getting to express yourself or coming together with this person love should not be all about sex absolutely i mean love should not be about um money money is important yes but it should not be about money mm. and um you know, when you're in a relationship, you ought to, first of all, yeah, get to know the person here, yeah, family, then this person must be a spiritual person, not just um, this person must be tall, fair, not in Nigeria and the rest, yeah. The important thing in the relationship should be the uh, Christian aspect of this person. Yes, everybody is a Christian. People are, yeah, we have Christians and we have spiritual persons too. Precious, have you ever been in a relationship with somebody where the topic of sex came up? How did you handle that moment? How did you keep your yes? Because you are saying sex is not money, money is not sex, da 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 da. We have people watching who are asking, how can I keep myself in my relationship, and how can I sustain my love without actually committing my body? or um, and engaging in sexual intimate activities from your personal experience or what you've seen or heard from other people how can a young lady fix her body's demands so to say okay yes we we are still with this flesh and mm -hmm. so far we've we are with flesh 
there will be um, this mentality that yes, when you're with the boy, when you're with your girl, sex should be the next thing. But then I do tell people that if sex comes up or if they're thinking of yes, let's have sex and this relationship comes up, the next thing you should be thinking about is let's get married. Okay, okay. Yes, let's get married, not just sex. Yeah, sex is good. People like sex. Mm, you know, sex is but then if you're thinking about sex and then marriage or in a relationship and that not yet you know, married, if you're thinking about marriage so that you are able to um have um, sex in have a sex valid sense. Valid, yes, you're yeah, not doing just it illegally. Exactly. Okay. Not doing it illegally and you <laughs> <laughs> tell me why Frank is laughing right now. You know, illegally. So um sex is uh sex in a relationship is actually a no for me. Okay. It's, it's very, 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 very bad. Yeah, okay. I do I do hear people say sex when you, when you guys are in a relationship and you guys have sex. But let's let's imagine I'm in a relationship for three years and you know sex, 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 sex. Eventually I did not end up with the guy, what will happen? So precious, the reason why you would not have sex with a man is not because is a bad thing to do or is a sin it's because you don't want a situation where you guys will end up together or you feel like there's more to offer there's more i to mean that's tell us the reason why you would not would rather the reason why, your own the reason why i would not um have sex in a relationship one is because i i like to practice what i tell people Yes. Preacher like precious <laughs> preach. <laughs> I like the fact that I tell people that yes, sex is sex is not a thing for a relationship, it's for my people. And the reason I will not get um, into into sex in the um, relationship is because I can't imagine myself staying with a guy for three years and you know, we end up the relationship doing someone else again, end up this year. Body count. It gets. Mm. Okay. So you rather sex, have sex, one sex. or two and that's all. Thank you. Okay, okay. So Frank, thank you, precious. <laughs> tell me what you think <laughs> consecration is and tell us how you have been able to handle it. Um so uh, I always say something. Um uh, it, it is important to when when we hear the scripture that says um, do not be unequally yoked. You know, it, 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 there are like a myriad of interpretations given to that scripture. You know, but like I, I think that the very essence has to be, you have to be on equal footing spiritually, drawing from the same source, and knowing, like foundationally, this is what God requires of us, mm. right? And this is what God has said concerning this subject matter, mm. so that it's not that you are speaking portuguese the other person is speaking chinese Absolutely. right uh, so that you, there has to be an alignment and you know the same scripture says um, can two work together except they agree mm-hmm. so uh, that's another like there has to be an agreement that and this is not to discount the fact that there will be because again we're all flesh and blood mm-hmm. this is not to discount the fact that there will be times where the temptation comes up in fact sure. in fact the absence of the temptation is a problem. Exactly. <laughs> okay. It's a problem. Yeah, okay. If All right. The conversation does not arise. That, yeah. you ask yourself, one of you is pretending. Check out here. It's, not mm. it's a problem that okay. we await you in the, future, in the next when you get married. Right. Okay, so, I get it. Yeah. So um, uh, it's just there has to always be that agreement to circle back to why you chose to go that route in the okay. first place right okay. this is not you know this is against what god has said concerning relationships so like as long as the both of you are on equal footing and you are drawing from the same source and you have this same understanding i think it helps to a large extent to mitigate mm. you know the, mm. the propensity to frolic hmm. It has a large extent to instigate the propensity to frolic around. No, stop playing instigate. Frank 2023. <laughs> okay, um, we're wrapping up already. Very quickly, let me ask both of you. Tell me your love languages. Your primary love language. The one you like to be spoken to, not the one you like to speak to your partner. Because I noticed that apart from the love language you like to be communicated with, there's one that you like to speak to your partner. And unfortunately, many of us, we speak our own love language to our partner. So I like to receive gifts. I will be buying gifts from my partner when, in essence, what he likes is not gifts. So 
What do you like? What language do you like to speak? Let me start with questions. Quality time. Of course, 90% of Nigerian women like quality time. I mean, that's all. That's a primary. Receiving gifts. Receiving gifts. Receiving gifts. Do you like giving <laughs> gifts? Yes. Women. I, I love You me. like receiving I, I, gifts, but do you like giving gifts? Yes, I give gifts. I give no, you gifts even give gifts. Like, you even do give gifts. To guys, to my guy. <laughs> okay. Major like almost every time. Oh, nice. um, this person, that, <laughs> I'm person that when I go, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. When I go out and I see, no, I think that's that's a very cute that's thing. I, I like, I, I know to be nice on him. Mm. I do get it. Aww. That's, yes. that's why I stole your money. No, I was going to say the same thing. I was trying to say because you really are a giver. No, because if you're not a giver, no. no. The thing is, 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 he's my guy. He's my guy. He's my guy. I go, I go out and. I see something nice and Aww. this will be very nice on him and I have the money with me. Mm. Why not? Someone like this will not wait till Valentine's to buy you something. Yeah, exactly. Valentine should not be the tradition. only day for giving Oh, precious <laughs> please. Friend. I know that's the truth. <laughs> that's the truth of it. Nice, nice. I agree. Don't make it to your face. I agree with you. Don't make it to your face. Your face does not agree however. Yes. What's your own primary love language? You see? Well, uh, words of affirmation uh, and the reason mm. being that mm. I'm, I'm very men are not big on words of affirmation so I'm very surprised like, no, 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 I don't know many men whose primary love language is words of affirmation words of affirmation, I don't, all the go gift thing it's not, it doesn't really like move you, move me my, 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 my no, it's not, like I I no, I I appreciate it, but like it's not my primary love language. Love, my primary lo what love language like is, is words of affirmation, and the mm. reason okay. is that I am highly critical of myself. Mm. Okay, right? okay. I, I, I like that you know that about. Yeah, yourself. I know. I am highly mm. critical of myself. Like, so when someone sends you positive words, they yeah. help you to there's, get better. There's virtually nothing that anybody wants to say to critique criticize to you. critique or yeah. criticize me or that what i do that i have not already said about what? myself because right that, so so um uh so when i hear words mm. of affirmation when people tell me that they can recognize my or when they acknowledge my effort that you are trying at so so and so place you are actually like i can see effort uh, it makes me really happy because it shows i mean i mean yeah yeah you're I, putting effort i mean yeah i mean i'm i'm <laughs> someone who is big on wow. growth on a personal okay. level personal development, development. Yes. i'm very particular about that so okay. when i get certain reviews attestations to yes. that, I, I, um, oh i think that is very beautiful and uh, we have had an amazing and exciting conversation on this special love month episode of a lot of people will be shocked because i may add that i don't know <laughs> what happened that guy in the gutter America. thank you so much for joining us on this episode of slice i totally enjoyed the conversation once again my name is Shio bakoli i had frank and precious on this episode and uh, do not miss the next one thank you for tuning in subscribe to our youtube channel